Well, if we look at uh, how we've gone this season, we've been doing better than Bristol Rovers. I think that's the only thing we can say. We've we played very well the last three games, and uh, the lads are very confident, and we will give a great performance on Sunday. There's an all-ticket crowd of partisan fans at Twerton Park as Rovers face the city in Bristol's first ever First Division derby match. Bristol Rovers believe their revival is underway. Leicester City was shot down a fortnight ago. It was Rovers' first away win. Heads were high when they returned to Twerton last weekend. They beat Luton Town 2-0. City travelled hopefully when the season began. Two successive wins, the perfect start. But six away defeats followed, a dismal run which was halted eight days ago by a goalless draw at Watford. Welcome to the West Match Live, and it has all the makings of a cracking derby. Rovers, just outside the relegation zone after those two wins, are anxious to get further away from the bottom of the table. City, who have also gone three league matches without defeat, believe they can move up towards the top of the first division table. Well, let's go straight over to Twerton Park and taste the atmosphere with our touchline reporter, Steve Scott. <laughs> As you'd expect, with less than a quarter of an hour to go before the start of a local derby, the atmosphere here is absolutely fantastic. Twerton Park, absolutely packed to capacity, as you can see all through. most of those Rovers fans around there. But behind me, the city contingent are making themselves heard. Well, let's have a chat with a few of the home support. I don't think there will be too many surprises about the answers I'm going to get. Who's going to win this afternoon? I think the Rovers will, I hopefully. thought you might say that. Yes, what What's the score going to be? Oh, close, I think. Close, probably 2-1. Two, one. Two, one. You're looking forward to it there? Very much so, yes. What do you think? Well, about 3-0. Three 3-0 nil. Three nil to Rovers? Yeah, definitely. They're looking forward to it? Yeah, I am, yeah. Well, there you go. If the football this afternoon is half as good as the atmosphere here, we're having a great time. Back to the studio, Alison. Well, from one healthy Scot to two injured Welshmen. With us in the studio this afternoon are Vaughan Jones, the Bristol Rovers captain in their recent revival, and Mark Aislewood of Bristol City. Both out of today's match, as I said, because of injury. Mark, yours is the, the longer-term injury. How are you? I'm doing very well. At the moment, uh, I'm well ahead of schedule. I have had a serious back injury, and uh, I hope to start training on Monday. Vaughan, you were out for so long. It must be doubly frustrating now to miss this one. You just got back into the swing of things. Yeah, this is the game that I missed playing in as much as possibly the Liverpool one last year, but I got a slight hamstring strain, which is giving me a bit of a problem, and it's common sense prevails, I think, that I shouldn't play today. So what do you expect from this afternoon? I don't know, they're normally very tense tight affairs, so uh, it's difficult, I very, don't like predicting on these ones, <laughs> to be honest, just hope that we come out on top, yeah. What about you, Mark? Well, yeah, I'm looking, forward to, I'm looking forward to watching the game, I prefer to play in it, obviously, as we forward, but uh, hopefully it's a good entertaining match. Thank you. Well, more from Vaughan and Mark throughout the afternoon. We can go back to Twerton and hear the views of the managers, Dennis Smith of City and Malcolm Allison, Rovers' chief coach. Malcolm Allison, first of all, can I ask you, have you had to make any team changes for today? Yeah, Skipper Vaughan Jones is injured, he's not 100%, and uh, so Shannon will go in the left fullback, and Marcus Brown to come in and play in his usual position. Marcus Stewart will move wide to the right hand side. Of course, Va Va Vaughan Jones, well known as a great motivator, are you going to miss that today? Well, they've, they've been motivated very well themselves, and, uh, and Andy Tilson will be Skipper today, and he's a good talker, and uh, he'll keep it well organised at the back there. Does it concern you at all that you've had to reorganise? Yeah, I mean, I don't like changing the team. And uh, Vaughan's done a very good job for me. But uh, it's essential. I mean, it, we, we couldn't do anything about it, so it had to be done. Are there any particular weaknesses that Bristol City have you're going to try and exploit today, or are Bristol Rovers going to play their own game? Well, we, we, we play our own game. Uh, there's, there's one or two things. The players, the players know Bristol City very well, you know, and they, they know what what things to work on and what things not to work on. It, it, always in these local dubs, you know each other too well, actually. Malcolm Allison, thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Dennis, can I ask you, first of all, you had to make any team changes today? No, well, the two will be the same as last week, except the sub down which I'll have uh, Mark Gavin there in place of Mickey Mullen. Now, last week, would you describe that as a turning point, a draw away from home? Do you think this is where City really start the season? 
Well, I think if we get a good result today, it could be a change for us because it'll take us into the top half and uh, set us up nicely with two open games coming. So it's a very important game for us today. Now, you know Derby's very well indeed. How much are you looking forward to this one? Oh, I love Derby's. I think it's a the great atmosphere. I mean, we'll be super in here today. We'll be buzzing no matter where, any, where you are in the country. Your Derby is the most important one. And today, the big one is Bristol City, Bristol Rovers. Dennis Smith, thank you. Good luck. Thanks, sir. So the views of the two managers. Now the two players in the studio. City unchanged, uh, Mark. Has your luck turned now in the away matches? Yeah, I think you, you just saw an instance there at Watford. They had a, a good piece of good fortune whereby they've come away with a point. Hopefully that will continue today. And uh, they played well at Watford last week, so I'm told. And uh, hopefully they'll do that today and come away with a good result. Do players think of it as, as the luck beginning to turn? Do you, do, do you get in a roll and see that things are going to go like that from now on? Yeah, you do get you do get on a bit of a roll. Sometimes the luck goes against you, as it has for both sides this season at times. And hopefully our luck is just beginning to turn, and uh, we'll get a little bit of luck today and play well and come away with the three points. <laughs> well, I thought you'd say that. Vaughan, now, uh, reorganisation involving Channing and Stewart, how do you see that? Well, Justin Chan is going to play at left-back there. He's played there before, apparently, on numerous occasions, so I don't think I should be too much of a problem for him. So he, he's quite an adaptable player, so he'll be okay. And Marcus Stewart is a quality player again, so he should be all right as well. Thank you very much indeed. Well, only just a few more minutes now till kick-off. There you are. A lot more football to come before half-past five. Action from another of this afternoon's Barclays League match and goals from yesterday's First Division fixtures, including the big promotion clash between Swindon and Tranmere. Spreads it wide to Monker, takes it down, tries a shot. Oh, great save from Nixon. A good build up on the left. Haskell, the danger man again. So, extended highlights of that match later, plus all 19 goals scored in the rest of yesterday's First Division matches. Also, action from another of this afternoon's First Division games. It's in a few minutes. We'll be back with Rovers against City after a short break. Stains like black currant juice are really tough. But Persil Micro Non Bio works better on those difficult stains than any other non bio powder. So, guess who'll be wearing their favorite dress time and time again? Today, people are getting more out of travel, more out of music, and, and a lot more out of something that's now bigger and better the Mars Bar. The chocolate's the best ever. The inside's smoother, and the standard bar's bigger to boot. <laughs> so what do you reckon? Yeah, chocolate's great. A little bit's good. And it's bigger. <laughs> yes. So the word on the street is more. Oh! Now there's more to Mars. Draft Worthington is now available at home. Worthington with a widget. The ring pull that tastes hand pulled. that you find just the right present? Ah, a Black & Decker strimmer. I'll get that jungle sorted out once and for all. Oh, a mop. Oh, a super power driver. No more arm wrenching with a screwdriver. Oh, great. A Black & Decker wallpaper stripper. Less time stripping, more time in front of the telly. If you don't tell them you want a Black & Decker, who knows what you'll get for Christmas? Well, what do you think, Jeeves? Sir? The Arctic Wonder, our new cooler, what not? May I inquire what you're proposing to do with it? It's the jolly old Croft's original! If I might caution you, sir. A drop of the chilled Croft is absolute nectar. Everyone at Stiffy Bings do lapped it up. Mm. The trouble with you, Jeeves, is that you're too stuck in your words. Not quite. 
in the Ice Age, it was just a <laughs> Killed Craft Original. One instinctively knows when something is right. Who's the boss? No. He isn't. No. He is. An heir of success. You can always tell who's boss. The fragrance from Hugo Boss. Typical! What? You Need a little help? Call Talking Please. Pages on Bristol 299992 and we'll do the searching for you. Welcome back for the big local derby. Bristol Rovers against Bristol City. The team's due out on the pitch any moment. Let's check what's happening at Twerden Park by joining our commentary team, Roger Malone and Mark Lawrenson. Mark, first of all, what are the conditions like? Actually, Alice, it's not too bad. It's rather windy. Uh, the pitch looks quite heavy. There's not too much rain about. Looks like a good day for a derby. Who do you think that uh, the conditions will favour? Well, it's, it's difficult to say, certainly in derby games, but and I think if you're looking for more strength than one of those sides, I'll have to go with Rovers today. Well, Roger, who do you expect to be the key players in this derby? Well, we'll be going into that in some detail soon, Alistair, but uh, I think Jackie Jakinowski uh, will have a big bearing on this match. Uh, he could win it for City, but if the Rovers keep him quiet, I favour them too. Thank you very much. We'll join you again later. Well, Vaughan, for you, who are going to be the key players? I think the battle possibly between Andy Cole and Steve Yates is one of the crucial ones. Um, and I'd agree with Roger as well regarding Jakinowski and probably... Um, Waddock in, the, in that little hole in behind the front two there. I think if you can keep him quiet in there as well, that could be a key feature. Mark, who are the players that uh, City fear most? Well, I believe that if, if City get their game together, i.e. Jack and Ofsky call, then uh, there's no reason to look at the opposition. I actually believe that the key players on the pitch will be the, the both sets of fullbacks because I think that's where the space will be on the pitch. There'll be a lot of players up through the middle. What do you make of that uh, Rovers reorganisation? No, I don't think it, it, it'll necessarily affect them. Uh, They've got their way of playing, we've got our way of playing, and uh, funny enough, both sides play the same system. So I think they might cancel out each other through the middle of the pitch, that's why I believe this, the game could be won with the full-backs attacking wide. Well, Mark and Vaughan, we're going to, go, we're going to have a, our chance to say at half-time, but let's go uh, straight across to the pitch now, to Twerton Park, and joining our commentary team, Roger Malone and Mark Lawrenson. Well, Mark, uh, what a wonderful atmosphere here, mate, boiling up, isn't it? Yeah, most certainly, Roger. I think the thing to look for today with the derbies are the mistakes more than anything. Not so much good play that wins derby games. It's the teams that, you know, have lost the fear factor. But as I say, the mistakes are a great, great big thing in the game. And I'm glad they've got a very experienced referee, John Martin. We'll be seeing plenty from him. All right, uh, let's have a look at the uh, young Marcus Browning then. Uh, number six, a key man for Rovers in the reshaped Allison tactics. Browning is the midfield attacking runner. How well those runs go for Rovers will shape the result. Well, with Vaughan Jones not recovering from that hamstring pull, the Rovers are without their experienced uh, left fullback and motivator. Now, Justin Channing, who wears number seven, he will play left fullback. And Marcus Stewart, wearing the eight, takes Channing's role as the right sided midfield man. Well, Gary Waddock there, a crucial task for the Rovers. Uh, he's their midfield anchor man, seeking to protect the defence from the raids organised by City's arch schema. And that man is Jackie Jakinowski, the Polish international with polished skills. He could make the openings to win the match unless he's tackled out of it by Gary Waddock and co. So City with a side then that's been improving lately. Plenty of experience there. International number four, Benny Christensen of Denmark, Russell Osman of England, Jakonowski of Poland in midfield. And Andy Cole there of Bristol City, the leading goal scorer in either team this season. He's got a dozen. Will he make it 13 on Sunday the 13th? And referee John Martin, a very experienced man from Alton in Hampshire. So Mark, what do you think, baby? Well, I think it's going to be interesting just the way City are going to line up, Roger. Whether Osman will play as a spare man 
bit behind the central defenders or whether they'll tuck him in front to stop and counteract Marcus Browning's, in, Marcus Browning's run. What it will probably do the same job for Rovers, sit in front of their back four and make them solid. Because both teams have conceded a lot of goals this season and they won't want to be doing that today. Thank you, Mark. Well, it's Rovers going to kick off. Uh, playing right to left in those famous blue and white quarters, of course. The silly reds, the Robins have come across here wearing their red. It's all set. Uh, it's a nice day for football in many ways. Nice yielding pitch. Good day for the ball players. Let's have a good live West match. Well, both sets of supporters have got the encouragement of both their teams on a nice little run. Both of them are unbeaten in their last three matches. Bristol Rovers have climbed out of the bottom three. Bristol City are in mid-table unbeaten in their last three so both in good shape that's the city bench there Crawford and Footman there's Dennis Smith he's never lost a derby as a Sunderland manager will he today Browning to what to Channing to Alexander cut out by Christensen Carl Saunders Throw. You can probably see by the swirling wind there that that will be a factor in City's favour. They've obviously taken the win mark, won the toss and took the win. Yeah, and the slope. Certainly with these games, Roger, they take half an hour for the players to sort themselves out. They're both conscious of keeping it very, very tight. To concede an early goal will be scandalous in this situation. Already, Warwick's got tight to Jakonowski, and Osman looks as though he's going to get tight to Browning. Saunders. Keith Welsh has been in good form for Bristol City, Mark. After a bad start at times this season, this boy shaping up well. He's shown a lot of inconsistency, Roger. As you'd say, just lately, he's done much better for City. He's a big, strong boy as well. You know, he kicks a ball a long way. He has everything that you look for in a goalkeeper. It's just a lack of inconsistency. But he's still very young. He's got a long way to go in his career. All right. Now, he'll have the win this half. Now, Mark... They used to tell me when I was a kid that the good sides played well against the wind, but it will be a factor, won't it? It will most certainly be a factor, but most definitely the good sides do play well against the wind. You can afford to stick the ball just inside the two centre-backs, certainly from Rovers' point of view, try and turn City around, the ball will get hold up in the wind, and of course, they're playing up the slope as well, which should help them. Jakonowski. Offside. So, uh, the man on the ball there, Andy Torsen, leaving it to Parkin to take this uh, kick. Now, he's another goalkeeper who's come back to form in good time for his team. Again, Roger, you'd say the same about Parkin as he would about uh, Welsh. Again, good build, should do everything a keeper should ask for, but he's just been inconsistent, the pair of them, they've both conceded goals. All right, Harden for the Romans. Saunders, offside. You can certainly see Malcolm Allison's pattern in Rovers play. And they've got Hardy and wide on the left. They've got Stuart pulls wide on the right. Waddock sits in front of the back two. And Brandon looks to get forward. And the two front boys make all the runs. You've been a manager. Tense moment. Yeah, most definitely. You don't know how your player's going to be. Once you cross that white line, you're in the laps of the gods, really. And the hands of the players. Cool. Nice work by Andy Cole. Just that little bit too far for Rossini, but Cole looking sharp, Mark. Yes, yeah, so the rest did ever so well, Roger, because he played a good advantage in, until he saw the last tackle, and he's given the free kick to City, which is a dangerous position for Rovers to concede. Right. Looks like Jackanoff is going to take it. He's been getting the full treatment from the Rovers fans behind him, but that's a compliment, isn't it? Oh, most definitely. Once you get... You should know about that. <laughs> oh, a chance there. 
Wow, that was a dangerous moment there. That ball whizzed across the uh, Rovers goal mouth there, and red shirts almost connected, and they've got the corner kick. There it goes. Great ball in by Jakonowski, and Brian looked favourites again. Just did a bit too much for him. Okay, Jackie with the corner. And a good connection there by uh, Russell Osman. Uh, nice corner kick routine, Mark. Yeah, it's something that you work on in training, Roger. You can do 200 in a week and turn up on Saturday and none will work. And then one week you go without doing them and you score two goals from them. But as long as the players who come in know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, Osman's headed just a bit too high. But City will be happy about it. They look to get in there on two occasions. Jakinowski. Yates clearing. Stewart getting it down for Waddick. Taylor. And the referee's blown out that uh, tackle on uh, John Taylor. Bit sharp, Mark. Yeah, I think the, what the crowd are moaning at is the fact that Rovers had advantage they were going to get away down the right. But I would suggest that John Martin thought the tackle was quite serious. He needed a word with Scott. And also Taylor will, will need some treatment anyway. And consequently, he wouldn't have been in, in the box for the end of the cross. Yeah, just a bit late, Roger, but... I would suggest you that's nothing to what will come in later on in the game in a derby match. Just warming the studs up. I just getting his retaliation in first. <laughs> Allison and Jeff Dunford, Rovers vice chairman there. I think they've been buying the max at the same store, haven't they? <laughs> Bryant up strongly for City. Warwick to Alexander. Played in and Browning couldn't get hold of that one. A little bit of an opening there for the young man. Keith Walshboot will be glad that Browning couldn't control that. It was a Super Bowl in, Roger, as well. It's a nice late run from Browning, which City have to be very, very wary of. Tilson again. Osman up. Jakinowski tackled by two. City still have it through that man, Shelton. Tackles are flying in now, but it's Jakinowski. But Tilson sweeping. And the wind hurrying the ball through there. It's a bit of a disadvantage, isn't it, isn't it, to City sometimes, the way that wind will skip the ball through? Well, it can be, Roger, most certainly. But just looking at the way the tacklers are going to come in, I think the derby's just about starting now, hasn't it? <laughs> Taylor up well there above Christensen. And, uh, Scott to Hardiman. To Channing, to Browning. Well, Russell Browning's got an early nut there, Mark. Yeah, looks like he's been in the Nigel Ben fight last night, doesn't he? I yeah. think he could probably need a couple of stitches in that road, but I don't think he'll get away with it till half time. Jakinowski skipping away from Warwick nicely, but uh, Tilson did well to block that. This is Stewart. Good skills by the lad on the ball, but those tackles coming in quickly. That's Tilson to Channing, the lad who's having to switch to left fullback because Vaughan Jones is out. Saunders. Well, foul there by Harrison on uh, Carl Saunders. A little bit of rugby work there, Mark. The game's going to be like this, Roger, for a while because. No side wants to concede an inch, you know, we've already seen the tackles flying in midfield. And I suggest today, certainly in the first half, if you have more than two touches, you're going to end up on your backside because the tackles will come in. Interesting, the ref now actually saying that boys yes. going to have some treatment. Yes. It's John Martin's first Bristol derby, the referee was telling me. He's done the Merseyside derbies, he's done the Manchester ones. He said, what are the Bristol ones like? I said, well, they're just like the Liverpool ones. What are the Liverpool ones like, Mark? <laughs> well, I'm Used to be quite good, Roger, but they're only quite good when you used to win them. But you better have a, ask an Everton player about that. The interesting thing now, once once players do get cuts, the, the trainer has got to come on with the aids and everything else that we have. Yes. And the other thing about uh, Mr. Martin, I believe he's the oldest referee still currently operating in the league. So you'll know him well, Roger, won't you? Well, indeed, yes. Uh, known him man and boy, Mark. Yes. Well, thank you very much, folks. Merry Christmas, and on behalf of the team, thank you very much indeed, folks. I didn't know you had that many we'll kids, able, Roger. We'll be able for a cup of tea there at half-time, Mark. I think it might be a long walk. <laughs> Jakinowski. <laughs> so Harrison with the throw-in. So 
Hardy and Mendes. Christensen and Bryant and Hardiman and Harrison in there quickly. And uh, Harrison, uh, as I said, a hard young man, and there's some hard things going on out there which should not be happening. The tackle on Browning. And Mr. Martin's got a hard job here to get this under control. This is the time for people to uh, try and behave, Mark. Well, it's very, very difficult, Roger. Temp tempers are so high, they're obviously afraid. It was an awful tackle. I think the, the least Harrison will get would be a yellow card. I can't for life we think he'll get a red one. But the referee's got an awful job on his hands today. Yes, I would have thought that was a, a yellow card job and no more myself. Hopefully there's enough experienced players on the pitch. Osman, Shelton, Warwick. They've played in these games before. Ho hopefully, yeah. It's just very, very late, Roger, when you see it. It comes flying in here. Wait, so he just knocks the ball. Here it comes. There you go. Caught his standing leg. He deserves a booking. Yes, I think the ball was there to be seen for a moment, and it was rash the way he went for it. He was late, wasn't he? He was just very, very late. But he was that late, he needed to be booked. Yes. A yellow card. Well, we agree on that. Maybe that'll settle things down a bit. Well, we need a period of sanity for five or ten minutes, don't we? So on with the football. I think uh, Mr Martin knows what a Bristol derby is now. He does, yes, indeed, yes. So Channing with the free kick. I think just a spillover again there, Browning yes. just running into the two Bristol yeah. City centre-backs. And that really, Roger, because it was a free kick for himself. The ball's 12, 14 yards from goal and he's fouling defenders when they're under pressure. Yeah. Crazy. He'll learn. There you go. There's no need to file, he's just got to put them under pressure. Tilson, good clearance. It's going to be difficult for Rovers centre backs with this, this wind whistling the ball at them, but Tilson so far has held very far. Taylor. Running Christensen, the Danish international. Of course, doesn't want to give it to his goalkeeper under today's laws, but uh, he's got away with the goal kick. He did very well, actually, didn't he? Just had the ball. Yes. Long Experienced player, good signing, loan signing at the moment, could become a full one. I think today will be a very, very good day to judge any loan signing that you had. And I'm certain Dennis Smith has thought about that before the game, saying, well, let's have a look at Christensen. Let's see him in the heat of the kitchen. Very senior. So Martin Scott with the throw then for Bristol City, Jakinowski Scott played in for a senior offside, Rovers working the offside trap well. Yeah, so far so good Roger, and I would say to them, it's actually easier to do it this end. The second half, if they're going to do it, they've got to be very, very careful, because one slip up and the two front boys of City are very, very quick and Rovers could get punished. Yeah. Dennis Smith be relieved, he's still got uh, 11 men on the pitch and Bryant winning it in the air and Edwards flicking it forward and uh, Rosinia to Shelton Jock Edwards, good header back he can head it back, Tiba can pick them up after the header of course Edwards is really, uh, Alexander they're running to form lately Park in to Saunders Matt Bryant's one of the few Bristol boys in this match with the throw for City. Little handball there by Tilson. Never far from that number eight city, Jackie Jackanos. 
Osman with the free kick. Should be the keepers. Bryant up strongly again. Edwards. And uh, Yates over the top and getting away with it. And Alexander with a chance to sort something out for Rovers. He's got Stewart outside him. Scott against Stewart. City throw. Played by Warwick to Stewart. Good tackle back by Rob Edwards, but uh, Mr. Martin decided it was a legal free kick. Promising position. No? It was a fair tackle as I thought. So it is a throw in. Alexander to take it. But he can take a long one. Stewart. Alexander. Good cross. Christensen clearing. Stewart. Warwick changing the direction. Chang got hard on that side, and that's a cracker. Oh, he struck that ball well, uh, Mark. The confidence of the man who scored in each of the last two games. Yeah, it was a super, super strike, Roger. For at least 30, 35 yards as well. Here you go. Good strike. The only thing was, it was always rising all the time. And there you are. Welsh had it covered all the way. But a good strike nonetheless. There you go. Allison very keen on his men letting rip early. Yes. Apparently been training on this all week, all last two or three weeks since Malcolm's taken over. Cole. Looking for Harrison, finds him. And a vital clearance there by Yates, it's dropping for Shelton. And he hooked it wide. Now that was an excellent chance for Gary Shelton, the midfield man who's made a habit of scoring lately, Mark. Yeah, the ball in from Harrison, yeah, he's just going underneath it, but then he could, all he could do was head it up. Wasn't really aware of where it dropped. Eyes on the ball for Shelton, unfortunately for City, he stuck it wide. And a chance at both ends for both teams, Roger. Yes, indeed. Here you go again. Eyes on the ball, just beats it in. Yeah, it's underneath it, and Shelton stuck it past the Yes, and Yates made up a little bit by getting close, didn't he? Made it difficult. Now this is Channing live. Live match West. Over the top for Browning. Good clearance again by Bryant. Taylor has hit that one. Young Matt Bryant is really standing up well against Taylor so far, Mark. And we saw Rovers' tactics really there, Roger. Ball played from the back. The two centre forwards, as well, two strikers, Saunders and uh, Taylor, both split wide, trying to leave a big hole for Browning to run through. Taylor, Stewart, Hardiman, got Channing calling for it on the left wing, but he hasn't seen him, and again it's Bryant, offside again, both sides really playing the offside today Mark. That's right, and to be fair to Rovers Roger, they look the more likely the two teams to get the ball down and try and play, certainly Warwick has been the best player on the pitch so far, the ball's come to him, he's changed the play, he's never had more than one touch, he looks as though he's going to relish his role today. Shelton again. Scott. We're looking to find a long ball in for Rosina in a minute. This is Edwards, but Alexander too good for him. Linesman flags on a foul, and the uh, referee's going to give it. Good play there by Ian Alexander, right fullback. Anxious Rovers bench. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how long Malcolm sits in the stand, won't it? See how long he can cope with it sitting up there. Yes. It's very, very difficult set up there, Roger. It's nice and you get a good view of the game, etc. But you just can't get the players heard and more often than not you end up down there on the bench. Yes. Trying to sort things out. Right. So Browning to Stewart to Taylor. Osmond's tackle. Doesn't win it. 
Alexander Muzik gives it away to Jakinowski. But uh, thus far, the Polish international hasn't got into this match, Mark. No, and he's also playing in an area, Roger Wake's very, very, very competitive. All the tackles are flown in round about Jakinowski's area. I would suggest to you that he may come into the game a bit later on when legs are tired. Channing. Lined up strongly again. Winning the foul. This lad made a good start to this derby. Yeah, he's attacked the ball. He's been very, very positive. He's going to be under pressure in the second half, Roger, because of what we saw that happened to Yates down at the bottom end where there's a temptation to get underneath the ball and if you don't get a proper header, header on it it causes problems in your own penalty area Rosinius flick on for Cole Cole taking on Yates Channing's helping that, that's Cole is occupied three of them and plays it back Shelton to Harrison and Harrison's got away from them Done awfully well here. And Tilson clears, but that was awful, awfully good work by the boy Harrison who was booked. He did ever so well, Roger, because he, he looked for a moment, he had no chance of getting there. So Scott on the left. Inside to Osman. Osman knocks it in there. And this is a chance for Cole. And side netting, but deflected for a corner kick. Really good chance there for Cole. And sit his corner. So City really piling on the pressure at the moment. Yeah, here's, here's a Harrison incident again. Does ever so well. Turns inside the two of them. And he gets his head up here and looks for somebody to pass to. In fact, great save in the end by Parkin. Just did enough. And plenty of time to clear. And Jakinowski's in swinging corner live. Tilson again get, getting in the clearance. Edwards with a hopeful one there, which should be no trouble at all. So Rovers survive. The first, bit, the first bit of football that City have actually produced, and they've had two decent chances. Tyson's cross shot, and Cole on the edge of the box with his left foot, which got deflected for a corner. Tyson, Barney's round the back. Once again, Bryant did awfully well there. At number five for City. Once again, that boy saved for City. But it's Channing again, he's going to shoot again, and my goodness me! What a tremendous shot from Justin Channing! That has set this stadium alive, what a shot! Here it is again, Raj. Two steps forward, and he hits it, we're right down, it's in like an absolute rocket. Welsh had no chance whatsoever. That's a great goal for Rovers. Here we go. 25 minutes gone, he scored in the last two games. Alisson said shoot, and boy did he shoot. 1-0 to Rovers, 25 minutes gone. Not bad for substitute left back. <laughs> Well, again, he's on loan from QPR. The, the price should be going up, Mark. Yeah, that's the problem, Roger, unfortunately. Well, there you are, the wisdom of the old Fox Allison, Mark. He told these lads here at Rovers, if you're going to shoot, shoot early. And my goodness me, they followed his instructions to the letter. That's right, it looks a bit unmoved, Big Man, as well, doesn't he? But Channing, Channing had the earliest shot five minutes before, which just went over the bar, and his second one was absolute perfection. Hardiman. Christensen. Free kick against Tilson, quickly played. Stewart. Alexander. There's one player who won't hold back in the tackle, it's Alexander. So, Mark, the old Twerton Park jinx is staring City in the face. They've not won here, and this is their seventh visit in the league. They've not won in the league here. What's it like to have a jinx crown like that? 
Well, it's always very difficult, Roger, but, you know, that's come from the first real shot and goal in the match. And maybe there's a little lesson for City. If they can start to play again, start to get the build-up going and look to hit the target instead of wanting to pile the tackles on. the jinx was nearly settling in there because young Bryant had been so good big error there look yeah, he, just, he missed his kick completely left foot and Saunders just stuck it across the face of the goal in fact he didn't really hit it properly did he it's only gone past about a foot I think if he'd made a good connection it could have been 2-0 to Rovers yeah here we go again left foot swinger that my left foot that Roger just dragged it across Scott. Warwick again. Cleverly switching the direction. He's done that before. Here's that man Channing. This is Hardiman. Chance. John Taylor with the overhead kick. They call it the bicycle kick. Well, he nearly uh, got it in. Yeah, again, good play by Rovers. You know, the ball was spread wide. Eventually to Hardiman. He dinked a cross in. Half cleared by City. And Taylor, he's back to goal, was unlucky. It's a great period for Rovers at the moment. And the causing problems down this left. City's right. Alisson doesn't know where to, where to pick Hardiman up or Channing. Shelton. So City will be regretting those early misses because they did have the chance to get it in. Now here's the... Yeah. Back to goal, does everything right, just didn't hit the top. Yeah, don't, wouldn't blame him for that, would we? No, not at all. So as I was saying, Mark, uh, City will be uh, ruining those early misses because they're in trouble now. Well, they're just under the cost for a while, Roger. They've just got to consolidate for a while. Not to look to look, make any mistakes, as Bryant has just done. And then they keep the score for 1-0 for sure. 10 minutes, and then slowly get themselves back in the game. Sure. But they've got a problem down City's right, because Harrison doesn't know how to come out, and Mark Hardiman are likely to get tight on Channing, and it's causing City problems, because what up to point the ball out to either or of those two. Now a chance for Christians to let rip, but he didn't really get any power on that one. to Jakonowski who has moved out of that central zone to the left wing now Edwards is going to have a spell inside see if he can do better against Warwick Hardiman to Channing here comes the Thunderbolt man a little pass this time for Taylor and that was a lovely move wasn't it again down the left right to just the problem that we've been talking about before Well, has done well actually throwing the ball out because he's seen Warwick's injured Here's the ball again by Terry, just in the in the channel there. I think Terry should have done better with the cross, well she went it quite easy actually. But the problem City are having is that Shelton is predominantly a central midfield player and they're asking him to look after Channing at left back, which he's really he's not good at. He wants to be in there all the bits and pieces of flying in central midfield. Harrison again doesn't know what to do, he doesn't know whether he's going to go tight on Hardiman or whether he's going to wait until Channing comes through. And I think Danny Smith will be looking, if not now, certainly half time, just to change his formation because it's a problem to him. City's right and Dan yeah, Rover's indeed. left. Yeah. Okay, Warwick's on his feet and as you were. There's a the country scene onto the football match. A lovely Sunday afternoon. This lovely country of ours, not so lovely for the city because they were goal down. But there's plenty of time for them to put that right. Only half an hour gone, there's an hour left. And Alisson's arrived down on the bench. He's obviously seen the strategic picture mark and now he wants to join in the nitty gritty. Must have heard what I said, Roger. In fact, he's on his way back to the stand. I think he's been down to, to tell them something. 
then return to the uh, return to the stand. I have to get him a telephone mark. This is a bit of poor defending there by Alexander. He's, he's looking to let the ball run out, Rod. You think it's going to get there all the time. And Edwards has kind of sneaked up on him and forced the corner. Yeah. This could cost, this could cost Rovers dearly. Now, with the wind, an in-swinging corner kick. Jakinowski should cause problems with this, yeah? Yeah, just stick underneath the crossbar, really. And, oh, he's played a short one, right? And that didn't work either, did it? So, sitting a little bit disjointed for me at the moment, Mark. Well, they're just struggling to get the game together, aren't they? And after playing the system the way they're going to play, the two fullbacks have got to get forward. They've got to look to supplement the midfield players. jackanossi has got to do a bit more work. And the quality of the balls into the two front players has got to be much, much better for City to cause problems for Rovers. Cole. Yates. Happy to give away the corner. Andy Cole, the danger man. Jakonowski's going to take it again. It's there. Fourth corner, fifth corner of the match. Played into Cole. He's good as me. He's unmarked for a moment there, but not now. This is Browning. That's not very clever. This is Shelton. Again, it's cut out. City just not making the most of their possession near goal, and away come the Rovers. Browning. Again, he's rather giving it away to Scott. He's got uh, the senior outside him, gives it to him. Played in for Cole. Turns it in there. But that'll be Hardiman to clear. And another corner kick. No, goal kick. Browning there, this young lad who does work all over the pitch. Uh, Allison says he's an athlete, he can run like Colin Bell, remember him? Yeah, he says he's the best, best athlete. However, in that position before, he should really just turn City's defence round at the back. He's looking to play somebody through because Rowe is on a good spell. But just turn them round and let his defenders get out. There's Denny say, he's definitely got a problem at the moment with the way the team are playing. And I suggest he'll be looking to sort that out as soon as possible. Browning, Bryant's head in there, Saunders, Hardiman, Shelton, now Jakinowski, Yates cuts it out, Cole has it, good tackle again by Waddock, Scott, Edwards, but uh, policed by Marcus Stewart, nice little bit of skill by the lad there, finds Taylor, He's taking on Christensen. Just goes that a little bit too much for him. Good play by the Dane. Yeah, he wasn't going to panic, was he? Very, very cool under pressure. And a good cleanse by Welsh as well. Stewart back to Alexander. Play on, says the referee. Played advantage. Browning's in there. Got two men inside him. Christensen kept nice and close, so he made it impossible to get the cross. But it is a corner kick. He certainly covers some ground, doesn't he, Barney? We're just talking about him in his own area two minutes ago. And where is he now? Down the inside right channel, forcing the corner for us. Right. That's right. The stamina of the long distance footballer. Right. It's harder than the left footed in swinger. Hardiman plays it in again, and uh, Mr. Martin has spotted the foul there. There's Browning, who's covering all the ground. This is Harrison. Channing. And Saunders caught offside, coming back. Yeah, what he had to do, uh, had to be fair, Roger, was that Channing saw him early, saw Saunders, and Saunders ran straight. Instead of bending his run, and making himself still on side, he just went straight. And to be fair to City, they pushed up quickly and caught him off. Cole nodding it down, but nobody there. Jakinowski gesticulating an outside left. Uh, 
I think it would have been a hell of a pass to reach Jakonowski from where Harrison was set. But he's got to get into the game if City are to do well. Hardiman through. Bryant. Well, they're finding it hard to string two or three passes together, Mark. That's right, Roger. I think that's the second ball we've lost out of the ground. I hope Bristol Rose has got enough. And about 38 pound a piece of one of those things. Browning. Chani. So, Scott's through. Jakonowski. Christensen. Jakonowski. Edwards. Osman. Alexander. I think Edwards just caught him in the tackle, didn't he? They'd had a bit of a contact on earlier on in the game. I think Edwards made sure that the tackle he made on Alexander was nice and firm. Yes, Alexander's been in the wars this season. No. He won't mind, Roger. He loves a tackle, doesn't he? Yeah. Rosinia, Edwards, and what have we got here? We have a free kick to City. Yeah, dangerous position again. Yes. Now then, Jakonowski will take it. He's one of those players who can place it on a sixpence in old money. Ten p in new money. There it is, and it was on Rosinia's head, but he couldn't keep it on target under the pressure of the defenders. Here you go, whipped in right footy, but not that much pace on it Roger, it just hang up a bit there didn't it for Rosinia, and if anything he's going backwards trying to head it forwards which is always very very difficult. Yes City did cause problems didn't they when they got wide and had stuff coming across the box through Harrison but they've not done that again since. Well no it was the best chance of the best spell of the game that little you know 30 seconds a minute Harrison got in from the right and then Cole had a shot but otherwise they've looked, they've looked very disorganised so far. Jakonowski. Scott. Now Cole quick there but the ball too quick for him with the wind behind it and so it's Chan the goal scorer. To Hardiman, back to Chani. Bryant, Hardiman again makes it. Cole. Good play by Cole. Well, uh, Edwards just let it go, but uh, the Rovers were behind him. And a bit of a chance here for Saunders. Sets up for uh, Chani. Little chip over the top. They had a decided edge there, uh, Mark should have done better. Well, they had two against two for a moment, Roger, didn't they? You know, Saunders did ever so well, read the ball, ran it in the back four, played a little ball into Channing. Here we go. Does ever so well here, Saunders. Slips a tackle, looks to commit defenders, and both Channing and Taylor got wide. Channing went for the chip, just unfortunately over the far stick. Saunders was wanting it back to him, wasn't he? So... Cole's way at the moment. The lad with 12 goals this season not been given much of a not much of a service for him so far. But there's a lot of this game left. I think the key for me, Roger, for the game so far has been Browning for Rovers. 
and Jakinowski for City, if you're playing that free role behind the front two, as it were, you've got to make sure you have a lot of the ball that you're involved in all the play. Browning has been for Rovers, but I don't think Jakinowski has been for City. Right, Shelton. He's got just Jakinowski on the left. Gives it for a senior chance. And a good positioning by the goalkeeper there, Mark. It was much, much better from City, Roger, wasn't it? We actually saw them string three or four passes together. Shelton did well, committed his man, good running off the ball, and Fed Rosinho, whose uh, shot was saved by Parkin. Here you go, committing people again, Shelton. Good ball there into Cole, into Rosinho, sorry, and a good save by Parkin. So Channing to Hardiman. And Saunders again caught offside. City doing well as regards pushing up and catching them offside. Jakinowski. Wins the free kick. Well, believe it or not, Browning's going to get booked for that. I mean, this really is the, uh, the daft thing about our game. Look, well, it's a free kick to City, there's no disputing that. And what Browning's doing is he's stopping the game getting forward. It's not a major offence, Roger, look at it. Really, considering the tackle by Harrison on Browning, and yet they both ended up with a yellow card. Well, that's for me where yeah. the rules are slightly mis yeah. disjointed. But the referees are under instructions this season. They must book for that, not may, must. So Mr Martin had to do it. That's the FIFA instruction. So there we are. Browning getting himself, as Mark said, unnecessarily booked there. That man, Tilson's had a superb game for Rovers in this half. Against the wind, he's held their defence together well. So, ball number three, Roger, as well now. Yes. Well, the Rovers fans there have seen it go their team's way thus far. They're enjoying it. So Harrison with the throw in, he'll be glad to get the first half over so as he can play over the other side away from the, the Rovers diehards here. So, there's Harrison. This is Edwards, this is Jakinowski, this is Harrison. And a chance for Jackie, and again, no power in it. And Tilson got a foot on it anyway, and it broke just nicely for Rovers. It did, and it was easy save for Parkin, but also the lines around his flow. Here we go. Alisson, there's a tackle actually really that caused the ball to Jakinowski. Tilson got a block. The referee had his, uh, the lines around his flag at fourth side anyway, Roger, so it wouldn't have counted. Right. But indicative of the way things aren't uh, going City's way, they're not making it happen for themselves. wants to take that quickly, he doesn't want to go in a goal down, there's just a couple of minutes and injury time left in a first half in which City have had their chances, not taken them and Rovers scored a tremendous goal, did they not? So, Waddick to Shelton, he's been coming to come into it a bit more now, is Shelton, Scott, Osmond through there, Rossini, but Tilson again first to it, just happy to knock it away. Jakinowski. Yates up there strongly. Well done. This is Channing. Nice little tuck inside for Saunders. Good skill by Saunders. And again. And again. And Browning. And away goes the midfield runner. To Stewart. Accidental handball doesn't count. Away we go. This is Stewart. And this is not in back down, this is uh, Osman. And away comes Edwards. And Rosinha. Can City make something of this in the dying moments of this first half? Harrison. Takes on Hardiman. Channing comes in. And, uh, I'm afraid that might be a booking for Russell Osman. Yeah, there's no great malice in it, Roger. He was just late, wasn't he? 
as a real good professional foul to be fair. Here we go. He just nicked the ball past him. Yes. He's going to go in the referee's book. Yes. I think the, I think the referee was intentional, which he did think it was. It's a booking offence, and he's gone. So there's uh, three men now who have to be careful that they don't get the red through getting another yellow. Uh, to be fair, the game has settled down since the heated incident we had early on in the game when, uh, when the tackle on Browning came in. And at least the teams have got on and tried to play now, which is something. So, Tilson then with his free kick. So, Jakinowski. Edwards and again they can't find the strikers with the final pass in injury time now Parkin who's come through his ordeal of having to face the wind down the slope and a free kick for Rovers for the grand foul on John Taylor ironic applause from sober Rambers fans who feel they haven't been getting enough free kicks but Mr. Martin has done what he thinks best and what he thinks right. And this is uh, harder than one catch that. So, Mark, your thoughts briefly on this first half then? Well, City have just had their best bow road in the last 10 minutes, but Berber's 1 0 up, easily on top. They look the better team. Tactically, they developed the side much better than City have, and they deserve to go into the half time. 1 0 up, a super goal as well by Channing. Number three for the Rovers has had a superb first half in my book. Cost £370,000 and he's shown why. Channing, not forward for Browning to chase. He's got Hardiman in support. Doesn't use him, rather careless. Osman to Harrison. Channing gets the block on. And again Channing. And Hardiman and Channing. And Shelton to Harrison cut out by Channing, it's the Channing show and there is the end of the first half and not only was it the Channing show, Justin Channing there that tremendous shot of his gave Bristol Rovers the lead a lead they deserve because they have created a greater number of chances but this game by no means over yet it's been Rovers first half let's hear now from Rovers Jeff Trenterman who's with Steve Scott Jeff, Jeff Trenterman Great start to the game. Amazing game of football, really, Steve. I thought, you know, it's a typical, typical derby, Bristol derby, a lot of passion, a lot of commitment, but a tremendous goal from uh, Justin Channing. And then from then on, it seemed all Rovers. Yeah, I thought, you know, City started very sprightly. Gary Shelton had a good effort, you know, a difficult volley, just wide, but uh, again, the goal gave us great confidence, and uh, I thought our centre backs are doing extremely well to uh, deal with their threat. What do you think Malcolm will be saying at half time? Well, we've just got to keep it going. If we can keep them out, we're going to win the game, so, you know, we're playing, we're playing well. Not a great football game, but playing well. Jeff Twentyman, thank you. Cheers, Steve. So Rovers on top and leading City by a goal to nil. Well, we'll be back in a moment with our studio experts, Vaughan Jones of the Rovers and Mark Hazelwood of City, to get their half-time thoughts. Don't go away. <laughs>